I got that going on too. So, all right, so go throw right into it. Um, go ahead and start saying that, guys. We're everybody's getting ready for school right now. Kids went to school, starting get going. Everybody's buying supplies. A lot of things are going on. So Hollywood is saying, look, kids are getting ready for school. So we kind of throw out some movies that are not as good as the summer blockbusters that are out. But we've had some. But then again, you may find a diamond in a rough that's out there. So that's what we're dealing with right now. And of course, there's not many reviews going on right now with other channels and uh, with Angel Has Fallen has coming out, which, uh, you know, was a new one. And another one we were talking about is uh, the Peanut Butter Falcon with Shia LaBeouf, which is, looks like a really cute, a lot of good family movies coming out. And also, but this one was a third of a trilogy of the Fallen. There was Olympus Has Fallen. There was London Has Fallen. And then I guess the fourth one would be my pants are falling. Something is falling all the time. So, and again, Morgan Freeman gets thrown in some cold water. Bless his heart. Well, he's like 105 and he's doing all this stuff. And he's like, <laughs> I mean, I, and granted, man, if he's that old and he's still doing this, you know, more power to him. You know, I look forward to my goading years. If I'm going to jump out of a boat and <laughs> land in some cold water and, do all she's not started yet. Come on in. Oh no, we have a surprise guest. <laughs> Yay! It's the young lady. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So your brother just arrived from his party. He must have had a better night than I did. So. Um, <laughs> hey, I didn't have a bad night. I really didn't. We, we had a good time. We went to the farm, which working farm, which was great. Uh, as you everybody know, the festival was going on downtown, so we avoided all that mess. We went down, we went on the other side of the lake, which was awesome, which means no electronics, no internet. We got to hang out with the animals. We had sheep, we had pigs, we had all kinds of, got some great pictures, had fun with those. Oh, the sheep were the coolest, loved the sheep. So it was really good, had a great time. And of course, I've been doing this a lot because I'm in front of the computer screen about 100 hours a week, so... I need some time to hang out with some non-internet friends for a while. <laughs> Even though they're furry and wooly and fuzzy and stinky. It was great. All right, so so we're jumping into the movie review of Angel Has Fallen, who Kiddo volunteered and took one for the team to go see Angel Has Fallen, starring Morgan Butler, Morgan Freeman, and uh and she and of course uh all kiddo exactly all the morgans and of course kiddo was hoping they had a captain morgan to try to you know go through this film two whole hours I bless your heart. Myself, unfortunately. yeah exactly you have a captain morgan <laughs> to go through this two hour film and <laughs> And we're not just going to, I'm not just, I'm sure there's some good things to say about this, uh, you know, uh, maybe Nick Nolte, I mean, he's got, a lot of old people got to act, that was fun, you know, Nick Nolte, you know, got to act, appear, like I said, we were talking about Morgan Freeman got to act, so putting the... I want to say, before we even start talking yeah. about, like, the movie movie, I just want to, like, give a shout out to Morgan Freeman, because he's literally God. All yes, yes, him. yes, definitely. I, and there's nothing wrong with it. And exactly. I, I feel like Morgan Freeman has always been the voice of anything. You could give the guy anything and he would make it sound good. Kind of like what Sean Connery was. You know, that voice could make... The some... always captain is either the narrator, yeah. the president, or God. <laughs> and I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> I was what I was going to say was that like I really appreciate his diversity in roles because right. the last Morgan Freeman movie that I saw, uh, he played a character that was like breaking out of a nursing home. So to see him, you know, going from that, yeah, he was like supposed to be crazy and like breaking out of a nursing home with all of his other nursing home friends and stuff or whatever. It was it was really great. It was a great movie. I don't remember what it was called. If you remember, leave it in the comments because I want to see it again. Yeah. It was really good. I think it's called God but, um, Breaks Out of a Nursing Home, wasn't it? Or yeah, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, so see him play that role and then just being like, uh, seeing him play as Mr. President was just like, it was... Because it was the first one I saw that the nursing home was obviously a comedy. 
So, and this one was an action film. So I just, Morgan Freeman, I appreciate your diversity and roles. You are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your service, Mr. President. Yes, yes, thank you. And of course, being uh, the count on Electric Company, which is always what I will remember him for, you know, being <laughs> the smoothest and coolest vampire on public television. Because you had him or you had Mr. Rogers, and I was okay with that. Of course, I chose... Uh, <laughs> Of course, you know, a lot of people, Yeah, I'm not jumping on people who think Mr. Rogers is the greatest thing, but let's be honest, Mr. Rogers was there because they couldn't keep up with the up pace of Sesame Street, because Sesame Street was too fast for those kids. It's like a lot of people blame weed on our children, but I believe it was Mr. Rogers because that's the reason why they were slower, because the kids who watched Sesame Street were always, you could not even keep up with those kids. They'd be behind the desk and it's like, what's wrong with that kid? He's been watching Sesame Street. You like here's some riddling so you can keep up with the Mr. Rogers kids, okay? All right, so that's just my opinion. I'm probably wrong. I watched Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Come on, you know it's like I always like the LSD number counting with Sesame Street. That was like the greatest thing in the world. It was like, you know, the psychedelic, you know, like uh, stuff going on with uh, Sesame Street, and then you had Mr. Rogers was like, you'd be sitting there, like, and here we're going to do the, you know, like Elmo's like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Twelve, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 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 And then you had like Miss Rogers going down there. He's making a peanut butter jelly sandwich. He's like, and then we add the peanut butter right there on the bread. It's on the bread. And then you take the peanut butter, the jelly, and you want to put it on top of the peanut butter. Oh, here comes Mr. McFeely with a delivery. And I hope it's our bread. Because I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, so let's watch Angel Has Fallen. Is it Fallen Down or is it just Fallen? Yes, which one is it? Angel Has it's Fallen. Into the water. Okay, so. Into the cold water. All uh, right, in the cold water where you put an 85 year old man in <laughs> the freezing water. God, I hope he got a good paycheck. <laughs> Let's begin. Let's 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 start off. Where we want to start? Where you want to start off with Angel Has Fallen? I guess I'll I'll explain the the plot and how how everything comes up to like I guess you would say the activity or the big the initial problem the initial conflict. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My old language arts teacher. I didn't remember the word. <laughs> the initial conflict. I blame so, it on Mr. Uh, Rogers. Well, <laughs> the, the story follows um, this this uh, Secret Service member. His name is Mike, and he's basically up and running for the director position because the director of the Secret Service, I guess, uh, is retiring. And Morgan Freeman, our wonderful president, has uh, is basically in the process of selecting the next director and he sees Mike as, you know, the most fitting option for it. And the thing about Mike is in the beginning of the movie, we're seeing him uh, go to these different doctors and everything because apparently he's got like painkiller problems and just like he's, he's got trauma in um two of the vertebrae of his neck so it's just like he's not in tip-top shape right now this guy has got some wear on him definitely like he's not in the best state right now but uh he's actually supposedly hiding that from the secret service how you hide things from the secret service i don't know but especially if you're like part of them but that's apparently where we are right now with yeah. that movie <laughs> um so the president, Morgan Freeman, decides that he's going to be going on a fishing trip just to kind of get away from everything for a little while and just, you know, go on a fishing trip. And he has 19 Secret Service members within the vicinity making sure that nothing goes wrong and everything. And our star, Mike, is on the boat with Morgan Freeman, Mr. President. And uh, they're talking about how um, they think that how Morgan, how the president feels that Mike would be the best person for the director position and is offering it to him and everything. And uh, basically, Mike says, you know, let me think about it. You know, it's a 
complete honor that you're, you know, considering me for this job. And then um, he gets dizzy, which is like a symptom of his weird painkiller stuff, I guess. He gets dizzy and he's like, oh man, I gotta, you know, I'm kind of woozy. And then they just switch out Secret Service members to babysit the president, basically. So while Mike is on his way back on the boat towards the shore where a lot of the other Secret Service members are, uh, they see an array of black dots flying towards them. And one of the members is like, are those bats? What is that? Are those, are those bats? Are those birds? And everyone just kind of staring and watching these, these flying objects for a little while until they realize that they're tracking drones which I thought was really, really, really cool. Like, that was probably the coolest part of the entire I movie. I did like that part, that they did kind of give you that horror of what maybe an attack drone would be like. I think that's cool. I'll give them that. It was really cool. And especially whenever the drones were coming in to attack the Secret Service members, um, what would happen is they'd do, like, a target lock thing and their faces and profiles would like show up on screen on the drone so it's like the drone knew exactly who they were targeting and like who they were going after and things like that it was it was insane it was it was pretty cool i really enjoyed that part but um basically spoiler alert i guess if you haven't seen the movie uh all of the secret service members except for mike die all of the ones that were in you know the location die except for Mike, and then Mike has saved the president, who is now going to be in a coma for pretty much until the last, like, 15 minutes of the movie. So, for like an hour and a half, he's in a coma now. So, <laughs> goodbye, Mr. President, for now. <laughs> and and then, yeah, and then, uh, I was thinking the about the Morgan Freeman, like, fishing. I was like, wouldn't it be great if he had his own fishing show? It'd be like, and I'm going to toss the line. The line is in the river. And at the time, the penguin would fight over the fish. You know? Fishing documentary by Morgan Freeman. That, would, that sounds great. Yeah, fishing show. Bad. Okay, go ahead. Proceed. I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the president and the Secret Service member, Mike, they get extracted from the scene and flown into the hospital. And basically, whenever Mike comes to, whenever Mike wakes up, he's handcuffed to his hospital bed. And he's like, yo, why am I handcuffed to this hospital bed? And basically, what they're saying is, um, we're, we found evidence in a, like, van close to the proximity with his DNA on it. And like a bunch of other things. Basically, what they're saying is we have all this evidence pinning the president's attempted assassination on you. And he's just like, excuse me, what? Like, I just saved the president and y'all are going to tell me that I just tried to kill him? Wild. <laughs> so basically, that's whenever we get into the uh, process of running yeah or no he i'm sorry i blanked her a second but basically now he's being blamed and um he's being trying they're going to transport him to a jail or like a holding place while the everything i don't know how the legal system works but <laughs> he's in handcuffs now that's that's all i know he's in handcuffs now it's like we're not going to consult uh, a lawyer on this it's like what would have happened let me see <laughs> Yeah, you know, of course, I want. Yeah, I want to be in the conversation of this now. Let's say that our protagonist is saving the president. Everybody else dies. What would happen? You know, it's like there's not a lawyer that you know. I'm I'm having fun time with it. The, the the new Adam Driver movie is coming out about you know when about the Afghanistan and you know people waterboarding some terrorists and you know and I'm not being too political here. But I don't give a care about terrorists. It's like <laughs> the dude like blows people up. And this is when, you know, President Obama was in office. You know, President Obama had a lot of, 
you know, war, just like Bush, they all do. But I'm like, you know, it's like the Crips and the Bloods. Of course, you're from St. Louis, so you know about crime anyways. You got East St. Louis and St. Louis, which is like the top crime places in, in the world. And Congratulations. <laughs> exactly. There isn't like this, you know, oh, look, Crypt and a Blood, you know, they fight. Okay. It's like, you don't cry. Well, which one do you cry for? You don't. You just like, oh, another you know, asshole died. <laughs> it's like, oops, you know, that's all I can say. It's like, you know, I'm not going to sit there. Oh, did you read him? It was right. Well, it was a criminal that killed him. Well, did the, well, uh, we'll let it go. Don't worry about it. You know, it's like, ever watch Crow? I like, I love the favorite one. And this guy here, he died on your beat from uh, vigilante. What do you got to say about that? Well, he should have zigged before he should have zagged, and that was the line. I love it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Let's continue. Okay, okay. Uh, so now Mike's being transported to jail slash holding facility slash I'm not a legal professional, so don't quote me on wherever he's going, but he's going somewhere. <laughs> and uh, basically the bad guys shut off all their equipment and are trying to stage it as if Mike Mike's team has broken him out and rescued him kind of thing. Right. But uh, Mike is like, yo, who are you guys? I'm a Secret Service member. I'm going to kill you all. So he, so, he, so he does. And that's at the point where he pulls off everyone's masks and is realizing that all of these people are team members with the person who was supposed to be his best friend. Right. So he's like starting to figure out that his best friend is framing him for the assassination, okay. attempted assassination. And, and, of the and you're talking about figuratively pulling off the mask, not literally, you know, a Batman episode in 66 where he pulls it No, they were all wearing face masks, oh, like ski masks. Like no face. Legitimately no face. Okay. Oh, okay. I was thinking of, I was thinking of no face from, you know, Batman TV series. Like, and you know, it's like they pull off the mask and it's like, why is the character now pudgier than he, you know, the original character, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but these were ski masks. More accurate stunt doubles. Was it? <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, do you realize that 30 years ago, the original Batman movie came out? today no but you know around this time you know it, it i was gonna say happy birthday batman well i mean the 30th anniversary came out or is that interesting it's like i never thought it 30 years ago jack nicholson and michael keaton and all that all right so we've got this action film we pull off the mask when we get to nick nolte i want to see a grudgy commercial uh roughy drunk nick nolte he, he's like, he, they'll pan to him in some scenes just to be like, this is what this guy's up to, doing bad guy shit. <laughs> that's, that's essentially his scenes, honestly. He'll be like, we're going to attack these people. And then they'll just be like, all right, now we get to see Mike running through the woods. <laughs> and Nick Nody comes out here, I don't care. I was like, you know, they had to keep on, you know, they had to hold him up with a stick and give him beer or something to keep him going. <laughs> Here you go, Nick. Here's your beer. <laughs> you know, I acted for less when I was doing 48 hours with Eddie Murphy. I once sniffed okay. in the... Okay. <laughs> I once sniffed so, in the back of a muffler to keep myself going for the whole entire shot. <laughs> uh. No, nah, I'm doing uh, this movie. Uh, at, at this point in the movie, uh, we get to watch basically that. Him being like, oh, this is my bad guy scene. Right. And then you get to see Mike running through the woods. And then, like, it's a combination of those two things for the next, like, hour of the movie, yeah. to be completely honest. It's... Yeah, I hate when you get to movies where they do the on the run, you know, like the escape from prison, 
or they escape from anywhere and then it's like a whole hour of them running around the same area and it's just like padding and the worst thing is like I said this film is two hours and you're like do mm-hmm. they really need to be two hours does it need to be really two hours long that's my question for the day does this movie need to be two hours long does it Yes or no? Spoiler alert. Yes. It does not. It does not. So what do we call this, ladies and gentlemen? We call this padding. And it's not padding. in Filler. Yeah, exactly. Filler, padding. And you're like, is there just like maybe, I don't know. Do they make more money if they put make it two hours long or what? I mean, why? I don't. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't really know. Yeah. In that sense. Why? Why do they make it? But yeah. So a lot of padding is going on. <laughs> so let's continue where we're. And at. then, eventually, our president wakes up out of his coma. Actually, no. Okay, hold on. President's still in a coma. Just kidding. We'll leave him there. Uh, the vice president is like taking it uh, over because, you know, the president's been in a coma for a minute, and he's like, oh, we need to have the president now, and he's like, I'm gonna swear assassinate the president, and you know who else we're also going to blame? Who? The Russians. Sure. Now, that, that yeah, is a per- now that's like, a pretty good plot device, because that's where we're at right now. Is there's a lot so of blame like, on Russians. We're like we're like this close to going to war with Russia, <laughs> and and then and then now the president wakes up and he's like, uh, "Where am I? What happened?" And they're like, "Oh, Mr. President, what's the last thing you remember?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, there was drone strikes and stuff." And then they're like, "Mr. President." Uh, we think Mike tried to kill you, and now your vice president guy is about to go to war with Russia. And Morgan Freeman's like, what? Why? <laughs> this is obviously not a thing. Yeah. You know, he's like, this is so obvious. Like, there's no Russians. Mike was framed. Like, he's like, guys, really? I know Mike. So- I partied with Mike. <laughs> I tell you, Mike is right, no Russian. Mike, Mike, my special agent, he doesn't kill me. No, no. That was Kittle's Morgan Freeman voice. Thank you very much. Yeah. We knew we'd eventually get there. <laughs> uh, so we're getting to the point of the movie where uh, we have the big confrontation. Mike is like, I got to talk to the president. So he's breaking into the hospital. And then the bad guys are like, we got to kill the president. So they're breaking into the hospital. So now we have this big gunfight in the hospital. And then uh, they have to evacuate the president to a different part of the hospital because that part of the hospital goes boom. (laughs) Is that like Heath Ledger, Uh, Dark Knight Returns, where they blow up half of the hospital? (laughs) How it's supposed to be. Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to blow up half of the hospital. Uh, and then, essentially, like, we find our way onto the rooftop where we have the big climax of Mike and his friend, the bad guy, are facing off now. Well, the bad guy's about to escape, and Mike's like, hey, I got this grenade launcher, and I'm going to blow up your helicopter. Hmm. And then the bad guy turns around and looks at him, and Mike goes, I'm going to drop this big gun, and I'm going to face you off with this tiny pistol. Ladies and gentlemen, this movie's for you. (laughs) It made me so mad. I'm like, I've been watching this movie for two hours, and you guys are going to draw it out with another, like, one-on-one, like, gunfight. What is this, a Western film? Like, all right, stick them up. (laughs) <laughs> essentially I guess you have to watch the movie to find out what happened yeah and, and keep, keep <laughs> and I'm going to remind you there are over eight 
Fast and Furious movies out there. Can we uh, remind people of this? How many Fast and Furious movies? Are there? there are almost as many as there are Air Bud films. Oh, my God. I remember talking about that. <laughs> That's how many Fast and Furious <laughs> films are out there. It's like, that's insane. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand why. This, but yeah. Right. And, but yeah. It was. It was a good. It was. Okay. I don't want to say it was a great movie, but I've seen worse movies. Oh, you've seen, seen worse. Better well, movies. I like that. I like. I like that positive part about it. And of course, the origin of these movies are really fun to talk about because it is kind of they're kind of politically motivated. Like, but. There's two sides every corner. It's like everybody says, I want to hear my side of the story. I want to hear my side. Well, both sides are being heard. And and w- mm-hmm. this goes back to the 300 movie. Anybody remember the 300 movie? It was uh, done by Frank Miller. And Frank Miller, of course, was basically writing a comic book to be kind of a combatant to the guy who wrote. We, we talked about The Watchmen. The, the idea of the Watchmen were really good, but when it got down to what America was really about, it was like, this sucks, because this is not how America is, because this is a British guy trying to say this is how America was be. The whole idea, the concept is so stupid, because it's like, okay, they make the nuclear man or the Manhattan guy. Yeah, that's true, but if you were trying to incorporate the atomic bomb, which is what he's trying to do, is trying to retell the atomic bomb... Russia had atomic bomb too, and people forget about this. It's like, why didn't there be? Why wasn't there like a Russian Manhattan Man, right? And so people were like, if you're trying to talk about America, what was going on in our minds was like, we were scared to death of getting bombed too, and so then the Frank Miller was like, this is crap. I'm gonna write what I think America is about, and he writes 300. He's like, that's America, buddy. 300, you know, and so you get the 300 folks and the Frank Millers and you get the another guy too who does the Transformers movies. They're kind of in that mode. And then you get the side of the story where you get these skeptics, you know, like there's no heroes whatsoever. I just think a hero is like somebody who just accidentally falls in the road. So it's 30 minutes. We're going to have to take a break real quick so we can check on it because I want to make sure we're getting everything recorded. Who's your daddy? 